Hey gang, this is Mike with my real estate dojo. And today's lesson is about the difference between wholesaling and fix and flipping properties. You know, fix and flipping properties is very glamorous. Everybody hits me up and wants to do that because they see on TV, HDTV or whatever show they may, may be or may be called. And in my opinion, it's really not that gra glamorous. And the reason is, is it's labor intense. I don't recommend you doing it. I recommend you hire somebody else to do it, but then you gotta manage them and you know, make sure they're a reliable company and all that other stuff that goes with managing people. Sorry, Lucky's here. Uh, we're going to the AT trails. But anyways, coming back to the story, the fix and flip has so much glamor to it. But here's some reasons why, or the difference between fix and flipping and wholesaling, even though I don't like fix and flipping that much. And I have a video about why I don't like fix and flipping. So if you wanna know why, watch my next video about why I don't like fix and flipping. Now, one of the major differences between wholesaling and fix and flipping is liability and cash requirements, okay? What I mean is, when you do want to do a fix and flip, besides the idea that you have to find a property at a deep discount, usually due to, you know, a lot of people do from the auction, um, and then, or whatever way media they use, they have to spend a lot of their own money, let's say the house is worth, 200 and they had to buy it for 100k cash. They got to come up with 100k cash. If they don't have it, they got to go to a different lender like hard money lending and private money or borrowing money from family or whatever the story may be. So you're going to need a lot of skin in the game, a lot more exposure. You're going to be getting bam, 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 bam right into your guts and sure you can come up and become victorious but the risk factor is so much and you got to manage so many people so that said you're gonna have a lot of skin in the game and a lot of liabilities uh, because when you own the property the deed goes into your name when you turn around and sell it now you're like warranting the property if somebody gets hurt on it they, they might be able to come sue you or you know, 20 years down later, somebody does a claim against the deed and the person you bought the title policy for, now that, that company's coming. So, it's, you know, so it's a lot of like responsibilities and drama. And of course you can make money. I'm not saying you can't make money. I'm saying, you know, it's a good money making mechanism. You can make money, but there's a lot of risk involved with it. And you have to have a lot of experience because, you know, there's a lot of fuck factor when you rehab properties because you can tear it down and there can be crazy shit or things you didn't realize or things you realize were less or whatever, okay? It's, for, it's too hard for me to foresee every event and tell you. I, I would have to do an essay about that. And so you're gonna have a lot of money, you're gonna have a lot of liabilities as in somebody could get hurt all the way down to, to managing these people, uh, paying holding fees, you know, taxes, insurance, you know, closing costs, realtor fees, showing the lights, etc. All that good stuff. And, and then the money breaks down in two parts. You know, you're going to need your acquisition money, which means you're just going to buy the property. Let's say you buy it at the auction. Then you're going to need your rehab money, okay? And in that rehab money, I like to even take it down to another part and say, then you're going to need your holding money. You know what I mean? And so, now what, what what is the profit margin in that? Man, after you you, you act, get the acquisition cost factor into it, after, after holding all that other stuff into it, and you include all the expenses, like any other business, you're roughly gonna average about 12% 
maybe max 20%, but if you're very, very lucky, so on an average, I would say 12 to 15% is the average. And so like, for example, if you go put $100,000 in the house with, with 80 or 70 or 60, whatever, and whatever it comes up to, you, you made 100,000, then 12% of that is just $12,000. So, if it was a uh, 200, then you know, 24,000. And it's not bad if you could do that in like one month, two months, three months, what have you. It's a great gig. The, way, the reason I don't like it is in the rich dad, poor dad uh, cash flow quadrant. He explained there that if you're in the S quadrant, you have the E S B I. And the S quadrant, you constantly have to go and hunt for a new deer. You gotta keep hunting for a new deer. Keep hunting for a new deer. And you know, systems are not really good there. And so it's not something that I wanna do. I wanna be in the B and the I quadrant. And I, now I really wanna be in the I quadrant and go back to the S quadrant on just individuals that I feel like are gonna be able to be successful. And I want to be able to make a significance into their life. That's it. Anyways, that's my view on fix and flips. I know it's, I'm not a fan of it, but you can make good money. If, if, if you enjoy getting your hands dirty, you like building stuff, then it's for you. If you're like a computer person or you're a nature's person and, and you don't like to like build stuff or you know then that's not really for you you could do other things to make money like buying notes or buying rental properties or you know whatever you could research your own vessels okay but if you you like being hands-on then this is the thing for you and then you just got to create systems to be able to make money uh, money while you let other people run it for you from buying the property to rehabbing it and getting the crew, etc. And it's definitely done. There's, you know, there's companies out there, for example, home investors, you know, they, they do that. So that's fix and flip. So again, to summarize it up on a fix and flip, profit margin is probably like 12 to 20% max, but on the average, I'd say 12 to 15% if you did everything right. The pros are you you know you make a chunk of money you could do some every couple of months depends on the project constantly you know hustle and grind which is nothing wrong with that. The other thing about that is that you know I'm not a CPA but from my understanding for, for me and I could be wrong um, is you know your tax bracket changes you become a dealer. And so, you know, if that's something that, you, that you're worried about that maybe fix and flip may not be, or you gotta talk to your CPA or attorney, we gotta structure it so you can't be. I just wanted to throw that out there. So you can make good money, turn around with it, but it, but it's high liability because you gotta get your name on the title, you gotta come up with the acquisition, you gotta come up with the repairs, holding fees, etc. Now let's talk about wholesaling. So wholesaling is still the same thing as being an S quadrant because fix and flip is an S quadrant. But wholesaling, you don't have to come up with the acquisition money, the money to buy it. So the property was 100, you don't have to come up with 100. If you need 20, 25 to fix it, you don't have to come up with the, excuse me, 20 to 25. All you have to 